Hi everybody, it's Frank here. In this video, I'm going to show you a much safer, best practice method for using a dedicated diskless workstation and a Linux live CD to improve security when accessing banking and other websites. So why would you want to do this? After all, you're meticulous at keeping your system up to date, you have a firewall on both your router and your computer, and you have antivirus installed and updated daily. All that should keep you safe, right? Wrong. Even if you do all the above and you're using an encrypted connection directly to your financial institution and your network wiring is wrapped in poison tipped barbed wire, you are far from secure. The reason is, with sophisticated malware and rootkits being written and cleverly delivered, antivirus is simply not capable of catching all the threats out there and has always been ineffective against zero day exploits. These are exploits that are so new that the antivirus companies are not aware of them yet and therefore they have no protection against. The fact is that antivirus is behind the curve and moving backwards. So here's the problem. Your operating system may be running various spyware applications or rootkits that are completely unknown to you and silently gathering up what you're viewing and typing and sending it off to somebody else. Log in to a website and they will know where you went and what you typed to get there. But what if your bank uses some type of one-time password scheme whereby even if they did get that information it would be only good for that one time? One example of how to defeat this is after you enter your login information on your bank's website, a very legitimate but fake page is called saying that your password is incorrect or the server is busy while scripted software is operating behind the scenes accessing the site you have already logged into without your knowledge. Have you noticed in the news all the high profile data losses at financial, medical, governments and other institutions in the last few years? Do you know someone personally who has had their bank account drained or credit and debit cards used without their knowledge? Has it been you? If you are unaware it happened and don't report it in a timely manner, the lost funds will likely be unrecoverable. Like cancer, the ideal way to survive it is to not have it happen to you in the first place. If you're a business owner, large or small, you're a particularly desirable target, but in my opinion, everyone should consider using what I'm about to suggest. This is something I've been doing for years now, and I discovered is a recommended best practice by security expert Brian Krebs. I'll include a link to an article of his about this in the show notes. So what is this diskless workstation I'm talking about? It's basically a PC without any hard disk at all, running a Linux operating system from a read-only CD. You turn it on and it loads a copy of Linux into RAM and runs it from there. When you turn it off, everything is deleted. Since it loads a fresh install of the operating system every time, you always have a clean install to work with. This is a great use for an old retired computer. Almost anything can work for this, including a laptop once you've removed any and all hard drives. But I recommend it have at least two gigs of RAM for best results. Before I get further on, let's talk about what you need ahead of that system. First, you should have a firewall configured on your router that's blocking all unused ports and unsolicited incoming connections from entering your network. If you're using wireless at your site, make sure you're using WPA2 encryption and have the access point locked down to help prevent outsiders from accessing your network directly and bypassing your firewall. As a best practice, the diskless workstation should not be connected via a wireless connection. Even if you use wireless for all other computers, this one should be hardwired, even if it means your CFO has to go to another room to use it. So why use Linux, what distro do I use, and how do I get it on a CD? Linux is a great operating system to use for this purpose, not only because of its inherent security, but simply because far more spyware applications are created for Windows than Linux. Many versions of Linux are available in a downloadable live CD format and can be used easily with a wide variety of older hardware. Did I mention it's also free? As for what distro to use, I recommend using one that is being regularly updated, easy to use, and works with your hardware without having to install any additional drivers. To find a selection of suitable distros, go to distrowatch.com and click on search at the top. Set the distro category as live medium and submit the query. You should see a list organized by popularity. Read the descriptions and select and download two or three that are updated at least one to two times every year. Burn the ISO file onto a disk 
and start your system from it to verify that it works with your hardware without having to install any additional software. I made a previous video on how to burn a live CD and test it called Don't Fear the Linux. Rather than going back over this process for doing it again, I'll link that in the show notes if you need help with this. Over the years I've used a few distros for this purpose including Mint, Ubuntu, Puppy Linux, and PC Linux OS with good success. If your hardware will support it, Mint is a good choice. If you're using older hardware, you might want to try PC Linux OS. Although Puppy Linux was a great choice, I don't recommend using it now due to the fact that it apparently has not been updated since 2014 and therefore software on it will be quite a ways out of date which might present compatibility problems with some websites and potential security issues. You don't need and won't get the very latest version of Firefox on the CD, but what you should be using is something that is no more than six months old if possible. So how do you go about disconnecting the hard drive inside your computer case? Well I've got this old ancient motherboard and a hard drive I just laid them out here to give a quick demo. And before you open the case on the computer make sure you turn the machine off and unplug the power cord make sure there's no power to the motherboard while you're doing this. What you want to do is disconnect the data cable to the hard drive and you can either disconnect that at the motherboard side or at the hard drive side or both sides and take the cable physically out of the box. In my case I've got an old IDE cable and that's this blue connector here. I'm just going to disconnect that from the motherboard. Newer computers will use a serial ATA cable which is much smaller than this one and on this motherboard it would be connected to the orange connectors on the right side of the board. Unfortunately I didn't have a spare cable to show that but the concept is the same. Find the data cable that's running from the hard drive to the motherboard disconnect it at one or both ends and that's all you got to do for that. The other thing you want to do is just disconnect the power to the hard drive and that just involves pulling the power cord out of the hard drive. At this point you can either leave the hard drive itself in the case disconnected which is fine or take it out use it for another machine or have it erased or destroyed to prevent data loss. And that's all there is to it. Just put the case back together, plug it in, make sure the BIOS is set to boot from the CD drive Put the CD in the disk tray and you're ready to go. So how do you use this new workstation? The first thing to keep in mind is that it's not going to start up very quickly. It's going to take several minutes to start up and be ready to use. This is really not a problem 90% of the time and you can adapt around the other 10%. Really this is a tiny price to pay for the added security. An important thing to remember when using the machine is that it should only be on for the time needed to access the sites and then shut down. This will minimize the chances that it might pick up something being pushed out randomly via a script. Don't succumb to the temptation to leave it running all day because I might need it later. An exception for this would be if you're an active stock trader and want instant access to your trading accounts for hours on end. For this use, you should have a dedicated machine that is set up and used only for that purpose. All other applications removed and has a firewall configured to block everything but the connections you need. Now what about saving files when you have no hard drive? If you need to upload or download files, use a thumb drive to transfer them. Run a virus scan on the drive from your main computer before each use. You can save the files to the download folder, which is in RAM, and then copy to the USB drive before shutting down or copy it directly to the drive. So what if you just want to print something while you're on the website? You don't have a printer installed. Well depending on the model of printer you have, usually installing that, especially if it's directly connected, is kind of a piece of cake. And here's an example with PC Linux. You just go into the configuration screen and you select hardware and then you go to configure printing and scanning and click on the add button. Once it finds your printer, just highlight it in the list. Here it found my old ancient HP LaserJet. Just click on forward. It'll find the drivers and it'll install that. And that's it. And then just close all this stuff. And then while you're in there, you can go ahead and print things as normally. One other thing. Don't forget to update your live CD version when a new one is released to stay as current as you can with software releases. New versions come out around every six months or so depending on your distro. So what about other ways to do this that are easier or faster, such as using a virtual machine or booting from a read-only USB stick? Well, these methods can work just fine, but require that things are configured correctly and verified. 
This method is simple and once you have the machine in place, it can be used by somebody without any training other than turn it on, open the browser, do your business and nothing else, and turn it off when finished. With less to go wrong, you and or your boss should sleep better at night. Well, I hope you consider using this method when accessing financial sites, especially if you operate a business. It's something I've been doing and recommending for many years now without any real issues at all. Will using this method guarantee safe banking? Absolutely not. Nothing does that and nothing ever will. The internet is not a safe place and never will be. But by being aware of threats out there and using best practices for security on your end, you'll be much better off than that guy you saw the other day checking his bank balance on a shared computer in a hotel lobby.